Wait, 49. Oh, it is? Yeah. So, look at the man end. Over here. Well, yes. Because we got right. 60. Oh, wait. 60, 59, 58. So it's that way. Baby, please don't go. Baby, please don't go. Baby, please don't go back to New Orleans. You know it hurts me so. One of the things about a mail pouch, a barn that uh, sets it apart from the rest of the collection, most of these um, signs are what we call an on-premise sign. They were a sign that was on a building, or they were POP signs, point of purchase signs. They were inside the store in a storefront window or on a counter. This is uh, this is actually akin to what we call the outdoor advertising industry, or the the lay people call billboards. It's an off-premise sign. It's very tough as a, a, a rule to, to uh, a feature wall signs here at the museum because how, how are you going to take down a building brick by brick and, re and reinstall those, restack those bricks on a wall in the museum. So this is one way to uh, represent uh, sign painting on walls. Way down here, babe I'm way down here on old Parchman's farm, baby please don't. This is, um, you meet uh, Roger, Grace? Hi, Roger. Roger Warwick, his dad was the last mail pouch painter. Oh, Warwick. Okay. That's pretty cool. Did he do this one? We think so. We think so, yeah. How do you know? Why do you think? Because it would have been in the right time frame? Yeah, it it definitely his time frame, just a question of, it could have been someone else if it was done in the 60s or before that. He was the only one from about 74 on painting. I believe the interesting uh, thing about my dad was that he, he became the last mail pouch barn painter in the early 70s uh, when the program uh, was, was cut back uh, quite a bit. Uh, he became the last painter. He got a lot of notoriety out of that uh, beginning maybe in the mid 80s. A lot, of, a lot of articles were written about this guy who painted all these signs and, and uh, was the last one. So it was a natural a story, a human interest story that, that people uh, gravitated towards. Um, I'm not sure it had anything to do with the product that he was that he was selling it, because it was tobacco and it was starting to fall out of favor at that time even. So it was more just the, the process of painting the sign that, that fascinated people, that he could get up there and, and, and paint these signs by hand uh, without a template, without any kind of guide. Uh, I think that's what really attracted people, uh, irrespective of, of the product involved. What uh, Tracy's doing right now, Tracy's up on a ladder out front. Works with Scott on the barns. He's uh, pulling off the track system to the old doors. Once we get the track system off, then we can start pulling the panels here one by one. And we're going to number them ahead of time on the inside of the barn. Black Magic Mark. We can come in here and start prying some of this stuff off, right? The uh, story behind the um, of the mail pouch barn is one of those uh, s stories where the vibes are right, just kind of it was meant to be. There's a lot of interest in mail pouch barns. There's actually a grassroots group um, out of Belmont, Ohio, which was the home of Har Harley Warwick, the last mail pouch painter. Uh, so I kind of put it out word that we'd love to have a mail pouch uh, barn. It's a loose kind of network. Um, word got passed around that the museum was looking for a mail pouch barn. And apparently there was this barn in Lanesville, Indiana, of all places. It's, it's uh, about 30 miles west of uh, Louisville, just uh, south by 64. There was a mail pouch barn that had been sitting along an old state route, which was once often traveled, but we you know with the advent of the interstates, it wasn't uh, as traveled as much anymore. But there was a barn up on a hillside that was gonna get torn down. So we assembled a crew, a couple guys that worked for the museum, uh, myself, uh, my girlfriend, a photographer friend, and barn experts, and uh, 
We had it scheduled for a Thursday in late October. Now, the fall can be kind of an iffy time in Cincinnati or in the Midwest. That day was, it was just like one of those days meant to be. It was about 65 degrees, clear skies, a nice little breeze blowing. And uh, it, was, uh, it was a perfect uh, uh, day for a barn raising or a barn de-raising. The process of painting a barn um, would really start with the company. They would have advanced men go out and find the best barn locations, the ones that were the most visible to the highway. Um, they would make the arrangements for the contract with the farmer, with the barn owner. Um, they would then contact my dad at that time or one of the crews that were in that area. They originally had uh, two-man crews. I believe they had four crews going um, in the early days. So these crews would be contacted to go out and, and head to the barn and, and go to work on it. Uh, the time involved would depend obviously on the size of the barn. Um, and even the, the texture of the wood on the barn would, would, would de determine how long it would take. Um, generally, with the two-man crew, you could, you could knock out you know, an entire barn, both sides, in, in a day, actually. Um, an average-sized barn. Um, the black barns went a lot faster than the red ones. There was just a lot less detail work on those. Uh, the red barns took longer. Um, you could probably double your time on those because you were, you were trimming the letter and, and adding a shadow and it was just, it just a lot more labor involved in those. Yeah, there were a lot of sort of specialized equipment involved, at least he sort of made up a lot of things himself at that time um, to rig up the scaffolding and um, well it was called a stage actually, uh, about a 20 foot stage and he would hook it up with uh, you know, ropes and pulleys and you know, very, you know, a very interesting looking contraption he would end up with, but, but it, was, it was darn reliable, uh, except for maybe once or twice, but it wasn't the fault of the, uh, of the equipment. But uh, it was a lot of effort involved just getting the sign ready to be painted, uh, mixing the paints and, and getting everything in place and, and up on the wall and up on the barn. And uh, I think that was the hardest part of the job. I think he actually enjoyed the painting and getting through all the equipment was, was more of the chore. So there's numbers on all these. Yeah, good. And well, we put them on here, but I didn't know they were. Well, the dusty ones on top are hard to see, but it's getting easier. Okay. Um, what we did is we went inside the barn and we numbered the panels on the back side in order so that when we took them down, we stacked them in order on my trailer and then we, we drove back to Cincinnati. The idea being when we wanted to put the barn back up that they would all be numbered. Um, it would have been quite a, a task to to just uh, lay out these 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 uh, uh, vertical boards and try to put them back in the right order to spell mail pouch. Do it once. Yeah. What are these? 6667 so they should go. Uh, 49. Yeah, with the numbers. Yeah, the numbers maintained. So that's that's going to be hell of a lot. Yeah, so let's... So that one is 49. Let, My let, temptation let, is to put it on this line. Yeah. Let's put them all the way over there. 2006. Okay. Yeah. So we got 49 on this side of the line. <laughs> well, and it does have to go here. Well, Sweet baby, can't care you. Better leave that sweet baby, don't you wanna go? Well, I found I'll see you in the morning. May God bless you and where you go. Cause oh, bye bye, pretty baby, baby bye bye. This is one of those um, rare projects where everything just kind of seems to go right. And uh, from, from the very beginning when we uh, 
put out word about we were looking yeah, for a barn, to finding the barn, the barn coming down, and the whole community spirit of taking it down, finding the barn restoration experts to make sure we got it down safely, all the way through to installing the barn here, here at the museum. Um, if you look at it, it, j it fits perfectly. We didn't have to cut any of the boards. It just happened to turn out to be that the boards that we took down were uh, 16 feet in height and the barn was 50 feet wide. So it just seemed to just drop right in there as if it was uh, meant to be. Dad would be very, very proud to have his work here in the American Sign Museum. Um, this would have really meant a lot to him to have the sign preserved this way and not only for his work but for all the guys that, that painted before him and, and just generally paying tribute to the large scale freehand outdoor advertising um, that, that he was a part of. Um, he was always very good to mention the people that uh, came before him that showed him the ropes and uh, he would really enjoy seeing their work on display here and to be a big part of that it would have meant a lot to him. We were picking berries at old Aunt Mary's when I picked a blushing bride. As we rode home together, I just wondered whether I could win you forever if I tried. Then at love's suggestion, I popped the question and asked you to be mine. From your kisses, I knew you.